We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. We set sail on this new sea because there is new knowledge to be gained and new rights to be won and they must be won and used for the progress of all mankind. We shall send to the moon 240,000 miles away from the control station in Houston, a giant rocket more than 300 feet tall, made of new metal alloys, some of which have not yet been invented, capable of standing heat and stresses, several times more than have ever been experienced, fitted together with a precision better than the finest watch, carrying all the equipment needed for propulsion, guidance, control, communications, food, and survival, on an untried mission to an unknown celestial body. And therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the most hazardous and dangerous and greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked. Thank you. Just like a person waiting in the wings to go on stage, they probably have less time to daydream because they're trying to remember what they've got to do. You know, I had a feeling that I really ought to concentrate on remembering the things that I had to do at the moon and all that. Gosh, here we are, and uh, we're getting down close. I hope the suit checks out okay. You get sweaty palms and heart starts pounding. It was like the big game about to start. You're in your work clothes, ready to go to work. But you still have to stay there. You have to schedule it in conjunction with the booster schedule itself. You're plugged into the console, it's supplying 100% oxygen. It's kind of a catch-up time if there's a problem with a booster or something, we're there not sitting out the pad until the count gets to a certain point, and then we're called to proceed to the spacecraft. Right at the last minute, there was a, a psychological block in there that said, don't, don't count on this so heavily. It might not happen. This is such a big thing. I, I frankly don't see how you can do it. Even when participating in it, I think it's audacious that you would try. I clearly could never understand, uh, as a crewman, how to, how to make it work. I could only learn how to operate my share of it.
being command pilot, uh, we're sitting in the center seat, so that meant I climbed in last. I just stood around and waited until they strapped in. And here was a kind of a, a strange quiet. Look out and you can see the large part of the state and the ocean. And this, this thing out here, you have the feeling that it's alive. That's the kind of thing that sort of, for the first time, begins to bring home the fact that today is not the game we've been playing and training for years. This is reality. I had the only window at this point, and I looked out, and doggone if, if the moon wasn't visible in the daylight, right straight out the top of the window. I know they're doing their job right, because the moon's right straight ahead, and that's where we're pointed, and you know, they're just gonna launch us right straight to this thing. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. All still go on the Apollo mission, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. Spacecraft also now is on full internal power. So up to this time, it had been sharing the load with an external power source. Once we get down to the three minute and 10 second mark in the countdown, we'll go on an automatic sequence. All aspects from there on down will be automatic, run by the ground master computer here in the firing room. Exactly, they don't have any place to cut it down. He's not giving an example. He's just looking across the flight plane to find out what the hell the trend is. We have some 7.6 million pounds of thrust pushing the vehicle. The vehicle it weighs uh, close to six and a half million pounds. We all are in this together as a team effort. We're going to make it work. And I don't know how to make it work. I don't know how to do most of this mission. But I do know that I can assure you that my piece of it is going to work. And you won't fail because of me. The members of the launch team here in the control center monitoring a number of what we call red line values. These are tolerances we don't want to go above and below in temperatures and pressures. They're standing by to call out any deviations from our plans. All indications uh, coming in uh, to the control center at this time indicate we are go. The test supervisor now has informed launch vehicle test conductor you are go for launch. Three minutes, 25 seconds and counting. We're still go at this time. There's a, a long period of time where you've done all the things in the cockpit you can do in there. Very few things left to say. You don't know any new jokes to tell. Or there's just not much left to say except just sit there and wait. It feels good. Astronauts report it feels good. One minute, 25 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates the third stage completely pressurized. Guidance system goes on internal at 17 seconds, leading up to the ignition sequence at 8.9 seconds. Power transfer is complete. <laughs> Firing command coming in now. We are on the automatic sequence. T minus 60 seconds in count. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. It won't fail because of me. T minus 20 seconds and counting. Guidance internal. 15, 14, 13, 12. 11, 10, Retro. 9, Engines go. 5, 
feels just like it sounds. I got a pitch and a roll program and this baby is really going. Roger that. Stand by for mode one Bravo. One Bravo. That's a lovely lift off. That's not bad at all. There's a moment there just of supreme elation. Complete release of tensions. To feel all that power precisely directed. Know that we're on course, first of all, for Earth orbit, and then precisely inserted onto the right orbit, the right trajectory for rendezvous with the moon. Apollo Houston, you're right smack dab on the trajectory. Your IU's doing a beautiful job. I got a yaw program. Trajectory's good. Thrust is good. Right away, Houston. At last, I'm leaving the Earth, and I'm destined for the moon. What a ride. What a ride. Roger, we copy, Pete. Roll's complete. This is really a rock and roll ride. You can feel it shake. There's a real strong vibration. Of course, you're up at the end of this beauty. Here you are going along with the G on you. It's up to about four Gs, but you're psyched up, good shape and all that. Even lifting your arm to move switches, no problem. Well, you are go for staging. Here you are coming up on staging, and when staging happens, it's like, man. Shut down uh, right on the money. 17 Houston, you are go for orbit. Go for orbit. And we're uh, we're out over the Canaries. Houston uh, through the Canaries. How do you read? You're loud and clear, Houston over the Canaries. Boy, it's just beautiful up here. Looking out the window, it's just Really fantastic. Roger. Let me tell you a little bit about the ride. Uh, John, it's just an if uh, there's nothing startling to report about the ride, we'd rather hold off. No, there's nothing uh, really spectacular uh, different uh, to report on the ride. We'll hold off on that. The sunset is just as beautiful as always in this space business. In Africa, there are a lot of nomads out in the desert. Clear desert nights, uh, you see the fires from all of these. These little yellow dots that represented the fires from all of these nomads camping out. And you realize the broad area that you're looking at. And each of those little dots represented people, other humans that are out there in an environment which I would consider more strange than the environment they might think about me. Hey.